So we're doing a review of um, <clears throat> how to do the claws and the hands and stuff like that. We've already attached the legs and arms and um, we have a body and we are now ready to do hands and claws. So the method is exactly the same. Um, you make one toe and then you make the other toes from that toe. So to make your toe, you're going to get a see I have it here you're gonna get a cylinder just go make a standard cylinder and then on that cylinder you're gonna to want to go to rotation segments and make it six and make the height segments like four or five depending on how many digits you want on the claw and how you want to bend it digits are like your knuckles you know like your little joints on your hand like how many times you can bend your finger um, so we would have one two basically um, knuckles on that and then we extrude out the claw from the top part um, you also don't want to have on um, uh, on the back um, caps if you can avoid it um, yeah, but we're gonna delete our way over there rather than putting it on there because when you take off caps on a cylinder it gets both ends you don't have like an extrude had we extruded a um, an end side we could control whether it had caps or not so it could be made through an end side just like you did the bot um, the body you would just make an end side over here and then um, you would extrude it and then um, you'd want to extrude it however far you think it should be for the digit. Oops. Let's shrink it down. Okay, and then you would convert that into a polygon. Um, you'd give it no caps in the back. You would convert it to a polygon and then try to work with it that way, but. Um, It's more work actually than just using a cylinder. We're not, so we're not doing it that way. Um, so on your cylinder, uh, you want to leave on um, the fact that it has caps, and we're going to delete those caps. Okay, so I'm not going to use this one. We're going to use this one, um, and you want to kind of scale it down to uh, be as big as or as long as you think your hands or claws. Are going to be. You can see I have some already pre-made down there at the bottom so I'm just going to make the hand ones and then we'll connect them all. That way I don't have to do like an extra extra long lecture. Alright so this is going to be our claw and um, what we want to do with this is convert it into a polygon and then we want to go to the back here. We'll go to our polygons tool and we want to go to the back here and open it up. So we'll delete those polygons so it's open. And then in the front here is this is where we'll bring out the claw. So to bring out the claw, it's um, pretty easy. You just want to go to um, extrude enter. So uh, create tools, extrude enter. Um, and you're going to kind of create that, um, let's pull it out, and then you'll extrude in there again, and push it in, so that's kind of like the skin and flesh that'll kind of be around the claw, so as we don't want the claw to just coming out, it would, you know, like look at your fingernail on your hand, you know, and then you see there's like a little area, like a little uh, ridge there where it comes out of your your skin um, we kind of want to do this I mean if you're not sure like well what does that work you could always just go like um, look up raptor claw or eagle claw hawk raptor claw um, actually well like here this is kind of what we're going for so like how the round little thing pops out and how there's like little let's look at an eagle claw <laughs> I might have too many feathers though. I should have done raptor. Eagle claw. 
the claw, not the claw. All right, so eagle claw. It's giving me stupid fish hooks, but um, here we go. So we're we're kind of going for this eagle claw type of thing. All right, which are pretty vicious looking. I mean, look at that. All right. So the eagle claw. Um, not the claw, but the eagle claw. Alright, so we want to extrude it out now. Um, you might even uh, extrude it in a little bit again just to give it that little bit of space there. And then we extrude. And some people will be like, well, why are we extruding this way? And I'll show you. So we're going to extrude it out. And then you might like scale it down a little bit. You might rotate it a little bit. And then you're gonna extrude it out again, just like we did the branches. And maybe rotate it a little bit. And then maybe push it down a little bit. We need to really start curving it. Scale it in a little bit. And then Screwed it out a little bit again. Well, let's just do it a lot. And we rotate that. Push it down. Push it down. And then let's just bring that to a sharp point with our scaling tool. Later, we're going to throw this whole thing into what's called a subdivision, which makes a mesh um, when we connect it all. And um, when we throw, when you see when I throw the this the cylinder in there, it smoothens out. You know, so you you know getting your thing curved just right. Mine's looking a little bent, um, so I might I might try to remedy that with a loop selection um, using my edges, and then maybe just kind of pushing that down a little bit more. Uh, maybe pushing this up a little bit. See what that looks like. All right, a little bit better. Anyway, we'll have time to do that. Um, don't make a subdivision yet. I just did that as an example. There's always going to be someone to be like, "I'm going to make an eagle claw and do a subdivision," and I'll be like, "Okay, we're doing a dinosaur there." So. Now, what do we do? So we got to make our digits. That's the knuckles. And um, I don't know if you'd call them digits. We're just going to call them digits. And so I'm going to go in there and squeeze those with the scale. And now I have my general claw. You can see it's very similar to the ones down there. Uh, and then typically like a dino um, would have three, you know, maybe one in the back or four. Um, I don't know, Godzilla has, I think, like a full hand. <laughs> um, whatever you're doing, like some dragons have like a five, um, uh, a five-clawed uh, hand. I think in like Chinese culture, a five-clawed dragon is considered really lucky. Or maybe it was a green dragon. I think it, maybe it was a five-clawed green dragon in Chinese culture is considered very, like, good fortune. And I don't know, you know, Chinese culture all that well for their mythology, but maybe other dragons mean stuff. I don't know. Um, but their dragons are more like snaky. And if you're doing a snaky dragon uh, with claws and short little stumpy legs and all the tentacles that come off the heads and spikes, those are really neat. I've had somebody do that in here, and I regret not saving that piece because it was really cool. Um, so a Chinese dragon uh, are really in, really neat. They kind of undulate and you know fly and slither through the sky. Super cool. Um, different from Western dragons, which are more like dinosaurs. Uh, so if you are doing a dragon, um, you know you can combine the two, Western and, and 
Eastern dragons. Yeah, no, there's no rules here, but, um, it, you know, anyways, I'm kind of went off on a tangent. Just decide how many claws you want to get, and they're not all going to be the same size. Typically, the middle one is the largest one for balance, um, and so what I would do is I'm going to go ahead and move the axes on this. Um, so that I can rotate it from the back and now I'm going to copy paste and then kind of just like nudge that over you got to get it in just the right position so I'm going to show you that in a second here and so I can rotate it from the back because I moved the axes all right now uh, typically, like I said, you don't want them all the same size. Almost looks like a chicken foot. Um, you want to kind of shrink one or the other. So, like, you might have, like, two big ones and then one, like, itty-bitty one. Or just go look at dino feet <clears throat> or dragon feet, and you'll get an idea. Um, all right, so I'm just winging this anyways. I'm kind of like dragon, dino, Chinese, dragon, western dragon, kaiju, Godzilla hand. So, sort of merging all together. But what we want to do is where we have the, um, what do you call a, a six-sided thing? Is it um, pentagon, hexa, hexahedron? Um, I don't remember. Anyways, uh, I'm going to take these whatever they're called, hexahedrons, and I want to line them up so that the little points here come together because we're going to learn a new feature called weld. And uh, it allows us to weld points together, and it's a very handy feature. And now I don't want them to exactly touch, but I do want them to be really damn close, okay? Um, So you're going to have to really get in there and then double check yourself. Um, see like that's off. It kind of matters. And like I said, the cleaner you do all this junk, the better it's going to be for you when you take and sculpt it. I think these might be a little bit too high. Let's keep them all together too up here at the top. I think these might be a little bit too high, so I'm going to drop them down a little bit and move them over a little bit so I can have a little bit of a palm and a little bit of a wrist on my dyno. And, you know, check your proportions. Like, you don't want this to look like the Apocalypse from St. Rose 3 or whatever when someone has, like, gigantic, you know, cartoon where they blow up their hand and punch somebody. Um, so you want your claw and your hand to be proportionate so you could take all three at this point and you know scale them down and like or scale them up or scale them down to be a little bit more um, to fit now uh, some people might be like well I didn't do a ferociousaurus um, even I did a, um, let's see if we can find a brontosaurus or a veggiosaurus as they're called like so this ankylosaurus or um, da -da 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 -da. let's go change our search parameters. Um, okay, here's a good one. So, uh, uh, a steak, uh, not a steaksaurus, a triceratops. A triceratops or a steracosaurus or whatever, they're all kind of the same with that's, I think steracosaurus looks like this one. Um, they're like the herbivores, they had little itty bitty stumpy legs uh, and stumpy toes. So you still need to do it the way that I did it for this guy, the legs, and um, but you do stumpy toes, okay? And you can see he does have some little claws on there. They're just, they're more for like, um, you know, digging and they're not really for defense or hunting or killing like mine, like my ferociousaurus here is. Okay, so um, you still have to do it the same way, all right? You just 
modify maybe um, maybe your uh, cylinder um, you start with actually let's just use one of these maybe your cylinder that you use is you know you have it facing downwards like that and it's um, really stumpy okay and then maybe you do maybe you slowly rotate with like a loop selection um, the toe and I'm gonna do that to these guys in a second here all right so just modify your design and do it the same way all right so now how do we connect this to the wrist you're gonna do your feet the same exact way so I'm not gonna do that here I'm just gonna do the claws or uh, you know if someone was here and they say I would rather you did the feet I would do that but I'm since I'm on the claws I'm gonna do that you take all three and you go to mesh and do a connect plus delete and so now it's all one piece but they are still separate and we need to um, we need to get those stuck together so we're gonna zoom really close in and we're gonna go to our um, our points tool and we're gonna go to a um, a tool called uh, weld which is right below bridge that we used before uh, and when you weld you go from point to point so you have to kind of like select the points you want to weld and then you go to weld and when you do that um, they'll they'll connect but you see that little white dot that means they're going to weld together in the center but you can tell it to weld um, from corner to corner oh, look how close I got that one that's pretty close so you go and select your points and then you go to weld and if you want to uh, not weld it in the center there um, Select it by mistake. Uh, if you don't want to weld it in the center, you click on one of the side points, and that's where it'll weld it to. See how I flipped over to that side? Or if you go over to this side, it welds to that side, or if you want it smack dab in the middle. So, why is that? Because sometimes you got to be really, really super precise, otherwise, it just doesn't work or something. Um, all right. So, now that I've welded those points, now I can do the next thing, which is to bridge uh, a skin between the toes. Just like, you know, your toes come out of the end of your foot and they're all, you know, kind of connected in that spot there. So uh, I'm gonna use the edge tool. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm off of welds. I don't screw anything up. And then I'm going to go to create, there's weld, we're gonna go to bridge. And we're gonna bridge between the toes. And then that'll bring us to the hardest part, is attaching the feet, well, the second hardest part, attaching the feet and hands to the wrists and ankles. The first hardest part will be the, the head. So now, you see how I've like connected all those together? They're one piece now. All right, so this is where it could get messy for you. Um, we are gonna go ahead, you, Unfortunately, because you did all this stuff in there with bridge and whatever, you it will unlikely allow you to do a um, a loop selection. It'll try to get the individual elements here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to all of the edges here and only the edges. So you got to be careful. Remember when you select edges, polygons points that you double check yourself and that you didn't accidentally select like I just did uh, an extra piece like that that'll cause you so much um, heartache and problems later on all right so what we can do here is we're on edge tool but we can extrude the edge which is really cool so we could go to extrude and um, then I just pop out the extrude and it starts creating a um, new set of geometry and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, 
I don't know how many times you want to do it. I don't think you want to do it too many times. Um, I normally would just try to go and get it as close as possible to the other one like that and then just let go. And then you see how mine kind of expanded a little bit. You may want to go to your scale tool and um, kind of shape it up. And you may also want to go to the points tool and you see how my bottom here is dipping down because it just it followed the contour and sort of the curvature of the other one and I just want to kind of lift those up and sort of flatten that out and then I want to bring those forward My flat foot is Horus. Alright, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of shaping it up. Remember we shaped the um, the hole in the uh, for the shoulder and all that, or we're gonna do the same thing here. Alright, now once you feel like it's pretty shaped up, and and also if you don't like, here's my body, if you don't have um, like let's say this opening isn't quite doing the job you can always go and um, do a loop selection on it um, with the edge tool and you can uh, extrude out a, it'd be better to extrude another section from this if you have to uh, and then flare that out to try to fit the other thing you know if you need to like create an intermediary like set of geometry um, or even just um, if it's too small, the opening, like you didn't calculate the size of your wrist versus your claw, uh, you can always go to that loop selection and um, then go to your scaling tool and just, you know, flare it out a little bit to um, match uh, the size, okay? All right, now what we need to do is connect it, but um, here's the problem. This end of my foot has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four. There's a bunch of sides on my foot, and my um, ankle only has eight, so it's like double, pretty much, right? And so, what we can do to remedy that is we're going to go ahead and take this cylinder that is the foot, I will rename that foot, or no, that's claw hand, whatever. And I'm going to take the body in that and I'm going to go do a um, connect plus delete just like we did with the legs and just like we did with the arms when we connect it. So these are, this is one piece now but they're separate. And then what you do is you go get a uh, bridge and the way that you bridge this, let's just deselect everything, the way that you bridge this, um, where's bridge, is kind of going to every other one. Typically, triangular polygons are frowned upon in the universe, um, but in this particular case, um, you're not going to be able to avoid them. I'm not sure if I want a polygon or a triangle there. I think I want a triangle there in that spot. So I did a couple of straight ones on the top. Um, you'll have to be the judge because everybody's going to be slightly different. If the polygons line up, then typically I'll just connect it to that polygon. If they don't line up, then I'll make it into a tri. These are four sided polygons, then I'll make it into a. A triangular three-sided polygon. Okay, so I did that with the top there. I left it open on purpose so we can go back to it and I can show you. All right, so good luck moving your view around because it's kind of a pain in the ass at this point. And it is a pain in the ass because. Um, I 
and you can you know just kind of zoom in go back to model mode oh, I went to the foot by mistake all right and then go back to high edge mode and it's because of where my axes is um, Let's go to the arrow to do my axis is way over there and I'm trying to rotate here and it rotates from that point. So, I mean, you could temporarily, I wouldn't recommend this. Actually, I'm not gonna let you, don't do it. Don't remove the axis on the body. You'll probably screw it up. And, um, but I mean, that's, if I was more professional, I would do it that way. Instead of amateur, dino maker. Okay, so you can see like what I have here. Let's go back to the edge tool. Um, so I'm going to leave a triangle there. So I'm going to, that kind of lines up directly with this a little bit. Um, I didn't mean to drag it, sorry. Bridge. Bridge. I say it again because they didn't do it. So there's the triangular polygon right there that'll go. And then um, I'm going to try to attach that to the same one. And then I'll end up with three triangular ones down here. And I, I don't know if that'll work out. Um, be careful when you uh, are connecting and bridging. that you don't bridge to the inside polygons, that you bridge up just that, that hole. All right, and you can see like the one that I left in the front here. Fix that up. So I figured the top ones were a little bit more important than the bottom ones, but if I were to try to pose this and bend it and put a, um, what they call a bones and a, um, a control rig. When they rig 3D characters, it's very involved. Um, they put bone skeletons in them, sort of like marionette controls, like a puppet show. This might cause a lot of trouble there. So the other alternative to like doing it this way, um, like I was showing you before, is to like, 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 I sound like I'm from Southern California. Um, go to uh, create triangular ones. Every, like every other polygon. Okay. I don't, I don't, I didn't do it that way because of the way mine lined up. All right, but I, I can start at the bottom here and just try to re-engineer it a little bit so that I don't end up with too many um, triangular whoops I did the inside darn it I can't get it all right so like that every other one see the side show me the side oops I think I uh, created a weird twist fiddling around with it yeah that is weird let's not do that those didn't line up very well so it's getting a weird twist in there. I want to do that one. And uh, maybe try to keep the triangular ones. Sometimes you just can't avoid them. Um, there'll be two in a row here. 
right there on the edge that might work a little bit better um, you, you can seal up the triangular ones as you go I'm just leaving them open so you can kind of keep track visually of what I'm doing alright so I don't mean to fiddle around with this that long but I, there is some things that you um, just need to consider when you do that kind of stuff and um, like I said before the better cleaner job you do right now the better your your end result sculpting is going to be um, and this is the old school method like you know the today's more or less today's modelers will um, just take a lump of clay and ZBrush and then just start doing their thing to it but you know they have the the training and the practice and um, it's like you know when someone knows how to draw or paint and you say you know paint a horse or whatever they know how to they know how to do it okay use this medium they know how to do it um, use paint use charcoal that kind of thing and um, It's the same way with the sculptors. It's just mileage. The more you do it, the more experience you get, the better you get at it. Um, but since we haven't, we're just barely touching on ZBrush, I'm not going to expect you to lump. Take a lump of clay and, and um, sculpt the whole critter out of a lump of clay. And then in ZBrush, there's another method called Z-spheres, which is how you make the basic body. It's kind of like doing what we're doing now, but it, it, you make it out of spheres and um, then you put a skin on it and then you sculpt that. So we're going to actually do all three. Um, we're going to do uh, from a lump, from scratch basically, we're going to do a Z spheres and then we're going to do from a block model so that you kind of have a little bit of experience doing it in all the different ways and when you, you know, go to art school to earn more money than me, you will be super amazing and super bitching at it. All right, now, what do we do here? Can we fix this up anywhere? Does it suck? Whatever. You could go to um, areas like loop selection, and you can move um, parts around and, you know, kind of adjust it as you, as you need. Um, you can even grab that circular part now, or I don't want to say circular, but the outline of a where we did all the, um, the feet and the toes coming together, where we created that skin between the toes. You can get that now and you can get in there and adjust this. So, you know, don't be satisfied with if it sucks, you know, kind of scale that up, try to touch it up. So I like that. I think that came out really good. Um, and then I would do the same thing to my feet. Okay. And then we're going to do that for a couple of days, so there won't be anything new for a while until you guys catch up to this. All right, so dynamite.